Welcome back, folks, to the Membership Machine Show. This is episode 17. We do this around 8.30 Pacific start, Pacific daytime um, every Friday. Um, we've got a fa fabulous subject. I've already, work, I've already got Spencer worked up already. I've been messing no, around. I'm in a, a – no, no. I arrived. Actually, I am having an amazing <laughs> morning. I got up early. Sun is shining. Had a great call with a new client. I could not be in a better mood. So please oh, do, not, do not anthropomorphize me into not being in a good mood. I could not be in a better mood. We'll soon change that. Uh, um, so don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. We'll soon change that. Could no, I be it, in uh, a better mood? Uh, 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 like I said, uh, my ability to change that is quite good. Uh, um, but in this episode, we're going to be discussing the best themes for your membership website. We've got some of the best <laughs> themes. The um, themes are changing in WordPress. The, the situation is... Fluid, to say the least. It should be a fantastic show. We're going to be talking about Generate Press, Ocean WP, Divi. We've got uh, about eight of the leading themes. So before we go into discussing the themes um, and what the situation has changed, we've got a couple of messages from our major sponsors. We will be back in a few moments, folks. Coming back, I'd like to point out, if you're looking for a great hosting provider for your membership website, your learning management, your buddy boss, your community website, have a look at WP Tonic. We offer, we specialize in community uh, membership, learning management websites. We've got tons of experience. We offer supreme performance hosting, plus a suite of the leading plugins, plus email, all in one, easy to use bundle. Go over to WP Tonic and have a look at what we've got to offer. So before um, we go into the Pacific themes that we're talking about, Spencer, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that you think people have to be aware that will allow them to make a semi-logical choice around what right. are some of the best choices when it comes to themes? Okay, so first of all, I want to say high five to Tina Cook, who is one of our regular fans who comes, and she's got an amazing audience. She's very skillful. I've been following her on Twitter, and I love that she's here, and I think she's probably conveying some of what we're talking about to her audience. So here's, uh, with that in mind, what I want to talk about. We are in a transitional phase that could not be any more exciting, in my opinion, between the old original way of doing things in WordPress, including some of the components like the customizer and templates and child you know, themes and child themes, versus the full site editing, FSC, which to me is completely unnecessary, a complete bane to the existence of all the other stuff because it confuses people and does nothing better than if we just stuck with the thing that was between those two worlds, which was the Gutenberg block editor, including Gutenberg block patterns. And I'm going to go into more details, but the short story of this, we used to be in a world when I started in WordPress, hand coding themes, and then you had to customize them using a child theme. And that was a lot of PHP and HTML and CSS. But then after Elementor and Divi and these other page builders came along, Matt, pushed into place this Gutenberg block editor, which he's now made universally available. And it was really frustrating, but amazing because two and a half, three years we were talking, you and I and the rest of the crew about like, oh, this is so janky compared to Elementor. It now finally works amazing. And you can save every block as a universal block or as part of a pattern and patterns can be copied and pasted. It's so amazing. And it works with what we already had. But then somebody got the idea. Let's finally take everybody that's in the right place and confuse the hell out of them by making full site editing where now you can go one layer underneath the editor and one layer outside of the templates and customize layouts. But in doing so, it breaks the heck out of everything else because some of the things that work in the Gutenberg layer don't really work the same way. So my personal belief is, even though I'm very good friends with a lot of people and I'm very friendly with Brian Gardner even who's really you know very gung-ho on false site editor 
If that thing would go away, everything else about what we're going to talk about today would make so much sense because the themes we're talking about here, they're all basically those original layer and the Gutenberg block layer and full site editing just makes a nightmare out of everything. Okay, that's my layup. Yeah, it's my, it's my the situation. In some ways, it's, you can understand why they wanted full site editing, but in practical terms, it's made everything pretty confusing again. Uh, I think anybody that's looking at WordPress at the present moment, I think this, the situation, the situation was always a little bit confusing, but um, I think what we've got at the present moment makes it, in my opinion, even more confusing. Um, I think because not only have you got the themes, um, you got page builders, and when you mix them all together, it's very confu It's become very confusing. Well, there, there, there's like let's put page builders into the last thing we said, so people understand. You have your theme, you have the the, the editor, classic or Gutenberg, and then you've got full site editing conversation. If you look at the actual theme themselves nobody's going to want to work there from today onwards unless you're old school and want to do child themes. And you can still do that, but it's nonsense because the Gutenberg editor is where the page builders were competing. When you used to use Elementor or Divi or any Oxygen, all the other ones, they essentially competed against the classic editor for what Gutenberg is doing. So that should help people put into place where do those page builders work. They work in that space where the classic editor used to be in the Gutenberg editor or block builder is today yeah um totally agree with you but i think for somebody that knows very little about wordpress that doesn't know what, everything you just stated it's confusing but uh, on the, yeah. but on the <laughs> other hand you could argue that it's always been a bit confusing if you don't know that much um, i just i'm just saying and i might be wrong i just think that the present scenario I think it's become even a little bit more confusing, but I might, you could argue against that. Well, don't, I, I want to, you know, you and I, I'm posting up here on social for everybody to show up. You and I can debate a lot of things, but I don't want you to do a Debbie Downer on this one, okay? Or Droopy Dog on this one, because <laughs> there was three years that stuff was really not working, okay? If somebody were to have lived through that experience, it's understandable why it would be a bit of a drag because you're like, wait a second, I'm, I'm like somebody who got spun around in an amusement ride. But if you were coming into WordPress today, it's so simple. It's so simple. We'll talk about these, but all the themes mostly we're talking about today in their own way, you just come in, you have a WordPress site and choose one of the combinations of a theme and a block editor and you're done. That's it. And all the other stuff, full site editing, pretend, see no evil, hear no evil. And everything else that happened before, it's not as confusing as it was. And that's a good thing, but it's taken us a while to get here. To you all. Um, so let's start. Um, in this list, I think there's three to four major players here. Um, we've got a list of eight. Um, so let's start off with what I consider one of the major players, um, and that's Generate Press. They do a free version, but we're going to be looking at um, the paid versions of these offerings. Um, mm -hmm. They do. Um, so, what? How would your? What's your view on Generate Press, and right. you, what would you say about it? Okay, so uh, I'm going to go on a limb here, excluding the old school page builders, like that were the ones that got us here, like Divi and Elementor. I'm going to say the three that are most relevant. We kind of have them up here: Generate Press, Cadence Blocks, and Astra and you know a cadence theme and astra they all have their matching block libraries so you've got the theme and then you've got block libraries generate press has made a name for itself for being very lean very streamlined not super sexy not super really attractive in the like look at my pinstripes way but for those that care about function over form and that care about lightweight and care about this and that. It's a very appealing option. And they were the first to have what's called Flex or Flexbox. That's no longer the case. So if you were doing, for example, like I need a layout that has four, 
columns in a row. Uh, the old way of CSS would have caused these weird, like, you know, hanging Chad things that stuff would fall off. With Flexbox, everything is very responsive in a modern way. But now almost everybody has that installed anyway. So it's a solid player, priced appropriately. It's really good if you're planning on doing a lot of stuff customizing and you don't want to get it in, uh, have anything get in the way of it, you know, preconceived styling from either the theme or the blocks. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think it's really um, Paul from Tut um, has been promoting Generate Press quite heavily. Um, he's yeah. a bit of a fan of it. Um, I, it's you can pay yearly fifty nine. That's unlimited website, so they offer a lifetime. There's license. a free one though too. Oh, that's no, a premium. You're listing there's the premium. A premium, Sorry. premium. Yeah. And Sorry. they offer a lifetime license for two hundred and forty nine dollars. That's like I say, unlimited websites. I my personal feeling is it it really is aimed at the WordPress professional market the power implementer, the designer. In some ways, it's aimed at the same crowd that love Divi. Um, the, like I say, the power implementer, the um, stroke developer, the WordPress professional type. That's where, because um, like you, what you said, they introduced Flexbox quite early it had a reputation for being lightweight compared to some of the other solutions. And not only the front side, but the back side, where you're actually designing, developing the website, which um, some of the solutions have been heavily criticized, not around their front end performance, but the speed yeah. of utilizing um, the back end to develop the website. But it's a strong contender. I, I, I want to add something onto what you just said, because that we didn't mention earlier. So we've seen lots of testing. We've done testing ourselves as to the speed of using a native Gutenberg solution with any of these themes. Um, when I speak to any, I mean the non Divi and non elementor We've seen that <laughs> it's really good. I mean, in other words, like when you're working in the native Gutenberg editor, regardless, very lightweight, very fast, because you're not adding another layer onto this tower right? Or another layer. And from that standpoint, the cost of these, I mean, it's, the, it's essentially one of the main features of your website, even at a 59, a hundred, 200, $300, it'd be totally worth it because it's essentially everything you need is in these packages, especially with, you know, a couple of the ones we're going to talk about that do have some of the fancy features. All right. <laughs> on to another one. Um, that's on all the lists wasn't exactly on my radar. Um, well, one of the other things I just want to mention, Generate Press, another thing that we've talked about, about plugins, other things in this show, is the people behind Generate Press, are, it's quite clear who they are. Um, they're mm -hmm. part of the WordPress community. They do, it, it's, I think, who's behind Generate Press is quite clearly on their website. <laughs> on to the next one, Ocean WP. Wasn't exactly on my... But it's been around for quite a while. Um, I don't know if you've got any practical experience with Ocean WP. You know, it's interesting. I know the company from name recognition, but I tried uh, some of their plugins. I have not actually dug deep into this one. And I... I do see that they've got all the auspices of something worth trying. I want to encourage everybody in this show, especially too, to realize that when you're talking about themes, all of these have a free version. So you can get a flavor of, I don't know, 80, 20 of what you want to do with them. And I, almost all of these have the same level of what we were discussing before. They're known, they're visible, the founders are there, their history is there. These all have, obviously they're themes. They have modern contemporary websites, but pricing wise, you can get started for free. You can demo their stuff. They all have the things you need to feel good about it. It's the coffee versus soda pop versus, you know, whatever subtle nuances between them. So there's nothing I can say about this that wouldn't give you reason to go try it. But at the same time, I have not spent a lot of time with it because I've been in those other three or four or five. Yes. Um, they seem to be pushing um, Woo, WooCommerce as well. WooCommerce, um, they they seem to be pushing that a bit as well. 
Uh, it's a red. The WooCommerce is a red herring. Uh, that's a we used to say that in law. That's like a distraction. Here's why, because WooCommerce itself. I mean, you'll see in Cadence, WooCommerce has certain elements and components that can be styled, but the actual mechanics of WooCommerce, obviously, that's my my wheelhouse with launch flows and so forth. Like the things you're going to do there are irrelevant to the theme, and if you're doing them in the theme, you're making a mistake because of the framework versus features conversation we have on the show. You don't want a theme to get too deeply into your WooCommerce operations because then it's going to bump into something else almost every time. You see what I mean? Yeah, they offer a yearly for free sites at $32. Or they also got a lifetime license at 133 yeah. It's very competitive price. I just don't have, I had a good look around the website and followed some of the video tutorials yep. it seems compatible but i just don't have any practical experience with it but like what spencer says they offer a free version give it a spin um, um play around with it on to one of the big players you know um people that really know what they're doing when it comes to marketing and it's got a, a big history in wordpress that's divi now, Divi is interesting because it's in Flex. <laughs> Sorry for the pun, Flexbox, Flex. Um, because it's fundamentally changing Divi. So what would you say about Divi and the changes that they have announced and they're in the progress of going through, Spencer? Right. Um I have not seen anything in the last couple months. I think the last time I referenced this was before the new year. But the last I heard about Divi was that they were on board and understood the realities of the future, where, as I was just alluding to, the native editor of Classic has been replaced with Gutenberg, and that it would be really, really, really hard long term to compete when essentially, you know, the platform and the core code and the the, the picnic table area is owned by automatic with their own Gutenberg editor. It'd be very hard to continue growing an audience where that's the first and native choice for free. So what they did, much like Elementor, is they took their audience where I think Elementor had in excess of 15 million maybe. I'm not sure if all paid, but certainly free. And uh, I think um, Divi had over 825, 850,000. They just said, look, we're going to do Divi Cloud and then they can do various things by offering a vertical of their own, right? Here's the thing. You pay us monthly. We give you the, the theme and the add-ons and the support and the excitement. And, oh, by the way, it runs WordPress. And I think that's essentially where it's at. Now, the one thing that they did do or allude to, and I saw it was posted up, oh, maybe in the fall, was that Nick uh, Roach had said, the founder had said that they're going to change the output of short codes into Gutenberg block compatible code, which is really a big deal because now in the future, instead of using Divi and saying, oh, I know in the future this is going to bite me because I'm going to have to replace all these weird codes with like actual markup or, you know, HTML. Now you could just use Divi to generate Gutenberg compatible stuff, which is a yeah. smart move. Yeah, Nick's announcement, video announcement, I actually think it's bigger than that. Um, is that they? My impression is they're throwing their hat with Gutenberg. It's a bit similar to Generate Press and some of the other solutions we're going to be discussing. It, it um, some don't and um, some have. Um, some of these solutions have, have positioned themselves or from the beginning are totally linked to Gutenberg. Now, um, Divi could have decided to go the same route as Animator decided, which they have decided to go totally their separate way, and it's not part of the Gutenberg right. train. Um, Divi have decided that they're going to jump on the train and um, offer uh, a customised solution that offers extra functionality and ease of use similar to generate press or cadence or some of the other solutions that we're discussing um so um before this decision it was a, a totally separate editor that was very similar to animator um we will have to see 
well, see if it's successful. I I personally, even though 800,000 is a lot of people, um, one of the things that was pointed out, um, I think James from Poodle um, did a video where he uh, remarked about this announcement and he showed that their sales has flatlined, especially through COVID, where a lot of WordPress um, plugins and solutions saw their sales accelerate rapidly, where um, it looked like Divi sales had plateaued. And uh, um, he uh, remarked, he doesn't know for sure, that um, he felt that this decision was linked to that. Um, I linked think to what? It was linked to what? To their sales plattering. Um, uh, th- uh, um, they could see that if they wanted a future... Um, that they had to make a decision, right. and they've decided to jump on the on the Gutenberg train. Yeah, and you know, it's realistically what we'd be talking about with Elementor as well. You know, with both of them, they had just a real a great following and a, a huge amount of progress. But there comes a time at which you realize the platform is going to go a different way, and the platform is irrelevant because open source w- WordPress means everybody can use that. They just had to like. Well, like Disney, Hulu, Netflix, I talk about this all the time. There's tons of content out there, tons of people to make content. Just make your own vertical. That's it, because that's the future. And many of these theme authors are also like baseball players or something, or you know, athletes. They're being taken on into one vertical or another. Brian Gardner and Generate Press went over to the uh, you know, WP Engine team for whatever he's working on now with Frost yeah. and stuff like that. You know? Now, I think the strengths of Divri is... It- that they are known to have excellent support, um, um, which comes, you know, they've always had a reputation for providing a great community or um, chat or any way you need to communicate with them. They've got a, it's a very dynamic community. There's many Facebook groups, their own ones, their secondary groups. They've got a very dynamic Facebook group. Um, they're, the people that really love Divi are very, very passionate about it. We have clients on that host with us that use Divi, and they just love it, and they want to continue right. utilising it. Um, um, it's definitely got a strong following. And I think um, we none of us know what the future entails, but I think it's a pretty... I think they've made the right decision for the kind of medium-sized player they were. Very profitable, know what they're doing, but I think it was the right decision for them. I mean, in the end of the day, it serves their customers better simply because we've seen, and we're going to see even more, your hard drive is going nuts on me with like the vibration. I'm going to send you a, I don't know, for next show, it's been like... 16 weeks now, but I'm going to send you a, a foam pad for that hard drive. Okay, um, okay. The What we've seen is the reality of this consolidation. And we've seen also how even good or bad, uh, automatic through its WooCommerce products and their Jetpack, they're, everybody's in a race, a land grab. It would be foolish for them to have waited till it was too late to get going on this. They need to, you know, everybody needs to be doing that yesterday. So I, I I absolutely think that was a smart move. Yeah. On to the next. <clears throat> so you know, so if you're looking to build a membership website, I think generate. I think all the three that we've talked about. That you know, I haven't got a lot of knowledge with Ocean WP, but it doesn't mean well, it don't be, go. Don't, 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 don't I know where you're going to go. Don't do that before you go to Cadence or Astro. No, I'm just no, I'm oh. not. Don't worry. Right. Okay. I would never cut out your beloved Cadence. It's a fantastic yeah. solution. I mean, it's... Um, yeah. All right, on to the next one. I'm just, <laughs> saying, I'm, just, I'm just saying that the three that we've discussed, they're all... Got it, got it. They're I all suitable sure. for a membership website. Um, on to the next one, um, Astra Pro. Astra is a, is another great player. It's slightly different, folks, because it's got... It's in two camps. It's got um, a solution for Alamator... And it's got a solution from Gutenberg. Um, the Gutenberg one, they're offering a free solution called Spector. They have announced that they're going to be producing a pro version. Um, I don't think that is 
it's in beta. I don't think it's gone live. Um, but they're a big player. What, what's your views on Astra Pro? Okay. Well, I like to use these, uh, you know, the GOAT is the... Suji Pawar and uh, Brainstorm Force. He's been around for, I think he says like seven years now. Mm. I've been around 17 years, but that was, you know, 2014 ish was when the page builder stuff started. And then that was like mostly Divi. And, and his team has been one of the, the leaders in this whole thing that now has these several big players in it. Um, he has a lot of strategic partnerships, including with Adam Presser and doing other integrations, um, as we talked about in other shows. Astra is extremely robust, reliable. It's the standard. Um, and he now, I think, personally has taken on a role as like a, with with Automatic, he, he posted recently, you know, yeah. as a venture capitalist yeah. yes. or something because he's done very well. Couldn't be a nicer, smarter yeah. guy in his capacity. I've never had anything but a pleasure. And again, some of my origin stories were working with him and Adam and trying to solve some of the things, but he's just succeeded in doing what he needs to do. Now, I can at arm's length recommend Astra or Spectra free or pro to anybody because you cannot go wrong with it. Having said that, go back to my, some people like coffee, some people like tea, yeah. some people like soda. There is a distinct difference in the flavor of what Astra produces in style than a cadence or a generate uh, press. And one other thing has come up recently, but I cannot begrudge them this. The original Astra Free gave everything, all the milk for free. The Pro was kind of like, eh, I don't know if I need it so much. My initial encounter with Spectra and with the Astra Pro is that they have now curated out. I mean, I can't begrudge them this, but they've curated out a few really neat features from the free Astra that tripped my annoyance a little. And I don't want to turn anybody off to it, but it was like, really? Like, this is yeah. all you know. I think they had to, though, in a way, because I think they've been a bit too over generous for the free. I, I, I the give moment. you that. Right. I give right. you that. I give you that. Um, I think, um, but like they say, um, see the divvy, the divvy. I, I, I know a lot of people who got a design eye. Um, they like divvy, but I think if you're one of the strengths of Astra is their starter themes. They've got these starter templates. Um, they're like I'm utilizing terminology that doesn't. I know from the past, but it doesn't really apply now. Child themes, but they've got these starter templates, um, a library, and they're pretty good. And if you're not experienced or got an eye for design, you can choose one of them and get started quite quickly with the Alimator or with the Gutenberg version, which is renamed Spectre. And get up and running, and they've got extensive over 200 to 300 of these. Um, and they're a great resource. I think Uncle Spencer is biting at the teeth about those remarks. So over to you. Yeah, I, I want to be clear too, though. That's actually a trend that is across all of these. So cadence, uh, generate block, everybody has starter templates. And the neat thing about it versus the old fashioned child themes is that. That's where Envato actually created a lot of problems for people. Is that like uh, the old ways you would keep the parent theme unaltered and make a child theme to hold your changes because it took the DNA of the parent and gave you room to make your changes and then they would be bulletproofed against being overwritten from an update. But everybody had the problem. You'd go to Envato and you go, oh, this super sexy demo, I want exactly that. And then you'd unpack the box from Envato and you realize it was just blank canvas. And 99.9% .9 of the stuff was you had to do yourself. So Envato and ThemeForest would start to do these things where you would get the demo file. And it was a JSON file that would import all that stuff. Well, that worked for some people, but it was just like, oh, bother. Because a lot of things were still manual and CSS. But with the starter templates and Gutenberg blocks, you can literally just look at a library of stuff and go, I want the whole thing, or I just want the color palette, or I just want one page. You click copy paste or you click insert page paste bing da bang bada boom and it's done and that's the thing don't um don't i shouldn't want anybody to be confused that this is exclusive to astra this is especially true on k i don't i don't think general i think that's the one of the generate pro, they have a, uh, that, 
they have it now because I always got the impression they wasn't offering much. Everybody to does now. It would be right. really, it'd be non-competitive to have a theme without, you know, starter templates. Well, but by the way, oh, here's another thing. Mix and match. Now, this is interesting too. Why is full site editing such a drag versus the blocks in the pattern library? Because when you're using the themes like we're talking about and the block libraries and or the patterns that you can make, guess what? You want to use Astra starter templates with Cadence theme? No problem. You want to use generate plus press blocks with Cadence theme and Astra starter? You can mix and match. Mix, put that full site editor in there and all hell breaks loose. And it's just really maddening because the system we got with those first two columns is so brilliant. It's like Lego blocks being made by a few companies that all work together and you can mix and match. So. You have to go at my hard drive. He's wacky these microphone left and right you, you, all over you himself. You need to isolate. I don't know if the audience hears it, but like I'm no. deaf as a doornail and I have my mic, everything off the table because when I had my mic on the table, everything like the hard drive to my typing would come through the mic. And that's what you've been having going on now for six months. I've switched it off, but you'll be whacking your mic left, right. Just lift center. it up on a piece of foam or something. That's all. all right. Put it on a chair. You'll be making enough noise. Uh, um, so... Um, but, but I think um, it's just the volume of, of the templates that comes with Astra. One of the confusing, one of the weaknesses, I wouldn't say it's a weakness such, um, probably is actually, is that they, um, with headers, footers, with some of the functionality, especially with Animator, um, I don't know if it applies to Gutenberg, some of the functionality they offer um they offer offered it in their free version and their paid version because it helped if you only had the free version of animator um especially with footers headers and other bits um but if somebody's got animator pro and they use the astra there's a lot there's a fair bit of duplication in functionality that can cause a bit of confusion to a newbie or somebody that hasn't got is aware of it would you agree with that spence yeah a little bit i mean you know uh, all of these things essentially come together in the dynamic i want to say it's like dynamic so everything we're saying today might be different tomorrow but you know hang in there hang in there because i I, I don't want to say what I don't know, but like, for example, uh, a pal of mine, Verdi Hines in Elementor has moved to a new position. I think he's head of product uh, relationships or something. He announced the formal title. He was at WordCamp Asia, but they're looking to do really interesting new things with plugin authors and other people that have products and services, not just for WordPress really, but for their platform in particular. And I think we're going to see a lot of dynamic. Well, they've got they've got oh. to do, they've got to do that really because otherwise they're, they're going to be left. It's it, it it's going to affect their platform. Well, they could decide to go tote. Well, they have. It, it's all about business. They could decide to go totally SaaS. We're talking about Elementor, yeah, yeah, folks. I think I think they've drawn. I think they don't quite know what how to deal with this in business but unless they're going to go for a full SaaS solution and i think that would be a mistake myself they um use so but the problem is if they don't encourage the third party plugin developer community of wordpress and really build on that strongly it, it's going to be a drip drip effect. Gutenberg's just going to eat their lunch, basically. So they, they've got some decisions to make, haven't they? Well, I think, you know, yes, but I think also you can't underestimate Elementor in particular yeah. because it's such a big audience and a dynamic company. They have plenty of money. They've raised their prices recently, which raised the ire of some people, but I think was logical given the fact that it's a platform. I mean, those of us, I had my thing come up for a renewal and I, I don't know, it was relevant to everyone. It was like 149, but the retail now is like 300 something for the same thousand seats. So the point is, if you like Element or you use Element or you have customers, it's still an incredible value, a thousand seats for $300 a year or something like that. But just understand that what they're doing, I think, is also making an ecosystem like 
there's an entire layer outside of just WordPress itself that you can live in. Like I have a Roku TV that has Hulu, Disney, HBO on it. I'm not buying HBO directly. I'm getting a, a TV that has that and other things on it. And I think that's where Elementor sits. It's like, it uses WordPress stuff, but you're coming to Elementor first. And by the way, it uses WordPress. Yeah, stuff. I've gone off there because we've got Elementor on the list, actually. But yeah. to get it back before we go for a break, folks, our mid-break, is that Astro, in my <clears> fault, <throat> well-established company, great founder. It, this is only my interpretation. I think Spencer would slightly disagree. I just feel if you're a real newbie and you're looking at, at a great selection of templates and just ease of use um, when you're more of a beginner, lower, intermediate, I think Astra is going to be a great solution for you. That's just my interpretation of it. So we're going to go for our break, folks, and we'll be back in a few moments. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to lifterlms.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back, folks. Just heard a couple of messages from our other great sponsors. I just want to point out we've got some great special offers from our sponsors. One of them, Spence, does a great special offer. Um, plus, we've got a curated list of all the plugins that you might need to build a great membership learning management system, Buddy Boss website, all curated for you so you don't have to go all over the internet to find the best. To get all these goodies, go over to WPTonic slash deals, WPTonic slash deals, and you'll find them all there. Plus, you can sign up for the WPTonic weekly newsletter. What more could you ask for? So on we go on this winding journey. Um, all right, let's go on to the one that Spencer just loves. Let's go. But on the other hand, I understand. Did I like a, or which one are we going to do now? You love. You love, I see. I um, um, but he, um, it's a great developer, <laughs> great team. That's Cadence. Um, I interviewed, I forgot his name, the founder. I interviewed him about 18 months ago. And they just kind of... Out, I think they're based in Montana, actually. Um, and him and his wife, um, they just exploded upon the Facebook, face WordPress scene, and they and they um, and now they're part of a much bigger team. Um, but it's just, I was just amazed. And talking about Ben, right? Yeah, but I was just amazed. Ben Rittner. That, yeah, amazed what he achieved and how that, um, and they've brought out, um, I think it's version three they've brought out. Uh, recently. Cadence Blocks 3.0. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, to me, um, it, they've really moved it on. And it also, they, on one of the weaknesses to me, which um, version three has improved on, is to me they've taken on some of the UX design elements from Alimator, Um and um, I've been quite impressed with what they're doing, really. So over to you. Okay, so I'll set the stage here that when all these transitions were happening, I was working, again, like with the Astra. Let's just put it like that. I mean, it had been an experience with Elementor as well. <clears throat> but in terms of looking at what would work in the Gutenberg space, we I had originally written launch flows, in fact, around the idea that Elementor provided the drag and drop capability. But then Gutenberg came on the scene and Astra had dove in pretty quickly. <clears throat> it always worked, but it felt a little like uh, wireframey at the time. Kathy Zant and the whole Liquid Web team and so forth, we've talked about how confusing it can be. But like essentially, she's working directly with all of the stuff that was um, 
brought in under the iThemes brand, I believe. And one of the things was that Ben Rittner had written this cadence. And cadence was different because it kept the sensibilities that Astrid started with, including using the customizer as it was originally intended for, where you have all your options. Like, we already had this system for 10 years, for goodness sake. And then the full site editing thing wants to go off and break it. But like the customizer now, through Cadence, through Astra, like does what it always was. Supposed to do. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's bizarre, isn't it? It's like it's just beautiful and it works. And now we got the block editor and the page, you know, layouts plus the customizer. It's couldn't ask for more. Just don't press the button, customize this template because then all hell breaks loose. But here's what I think they did better. I'm not saying Astra did wrong, but better. They made it sexy. They made it sexy. It's not just a white mm. box rolling off the showroom with weird blue lines and heavy styling. And I got to tell you why that matters to me. It would be better if you looked at like Generate Press does nothing. It's like literally a whiteboard. Cadence is like super sexy, like Tesla. I don't know if you like Tesla, but like modern electric car sexy, like just enough style and the you know like a apple computer and then there's astra which is kind of like i don't want to say soviet union but like a soviet yeah, well, i know where you go I, you know, I, I would i would compare it to soviet okay union, no too far back but i know, I know it, where you're coming it's from. like a it's like a ford you know yeah. it it'll get you there but it's yeah. like really like the checkout yeah. checkbox has this heavy two pixel black line with square corners by default really like and so the difference was cadence out of the box. Man, just get you there. And their you, starter you, templates you, get you there. I gotta you, go, I gotta go be alone for a minute. Yeah, you're, oh. yeah you're using your sexy voice. <laughs> I'm just saying, when it comes to the things that I teach people to do, how to succeed financially with WordPress, right? Building stuff. Cadence made it possible out of the box to take what I'd built upon with launch flows and all the other things that led up to it. And immediately just go, here it is. It's done. Ben Rittner, the Cadence theme, everything you need to just use this out of the box. You don't have to change a yeah. thing from the standard. Um, I think he's always had a good eye for UX, but it was a, until um, Block 3, version 3, it was a little, in organization terms, it was, was a little, it was, it was a bit messy. But there, uh, there, there was pieces missing is the way I would say it. Like you would come across like, like, a, like a hotel, the new hotel. And everything's beautiful. You go to your room and it's like they forgot to connect the toilet or something. That would be what it would be. You know, there would be things that were just functionally not right. Like, for example, yeah. they were oh, late. Here we go. He's whacking, whacking his feet. Well, they were, they were late to the game with some of the controls on some of the blocks. Or the, the controls didn't do what you expected, like with Flexbox and stuff. So now they've really sorted much of that out. But here's what's neat about it. They offer another product that I don't think people need. But it's like the customization, I forget what they're calling it, a sales kit or sell kit or something like that. You don't need that. If you use it, fine, but just be careful because the thing that they're in danger of, and I've spoken to Kathy about this indirectly, and I say it on the show if she hears this, they're in danger of going into framework territory. And I yeah. hope they restrain themselves yeah. from doing that because they've dangerously put themselves in a position. There's several controls for WooCommerce checkout and products that like, in the theme start to get into like, oh, which which fields would you like to display? But now they get this sales sell kit thing that's got like checkout customizer and all this tchotchkes that they're great as a separate plugin, but please do not try to do all those other things that are better left to other plugins. Well, it's tricky, isn't it, Being It's tempting, isn't it? Well, they can do it by a plugin and I have no objection. It's yeah. when it gets into the theme oh, yeah. or <laughs> the core blocks that I get nervous. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. But it, they're, they're a great team. Um, obviously, um, I had some reservations because the new owners, because um, it's a hosting company and I'm a hosting provider. So, um, but... Um, I think what I think the one of the strengths of cadence is it struggles. It's one of the um, ones that it's the most effective ones that I think struggles the power user um, implementer, which I see generate press um, and divvy. In some ways, it struggles the the new the new user. 
effectively um, as Astra. Some people say Divi, new user. I don't think... I think Divi, to my mind, isn't aimed at the new users so much, but some people disagree with me there. Divi's market is unquestionably the artistic yeah. creative. In other words, if you're a creator or an artistic person first and you've been around some time, you will absolutely love Divi because yeah. the things that it does for a WYSIWYG interface are designed to like do those nuances. Now, having said that, they've been very progressive, although I do not use it. They've been very progressive in optimizing their load times and the front end thing and so on and so forth. And now, as we talked about, they're going to be maybe outputting. Well, thanks for pointing that out because I didn't point it out. That's one of the main criticisms of Divi. It's not the front end loading. Some people have criticized that um, as they criticize Animator. Um, I think that the, that's linked to our previous show last week about the kind of hosting provider to some extent. Um, but it's the back end. It, 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 it's dog slow, I'm sorry, compared to Cadence. or um, It's just a bit of a dog, I'm sorry. The way I can't, I can't wait four seconds for something to bloody load in the back end. Um, and, some, and that's some of the criticism of Animator. Not so much the front, but um, but um, I. Some people would disagree with me. I think one of the strengths of Animator um, is that if you're utilizing something like Wix or um, some of the other SaaS page builders, it, it's got some similarities in feel. Um, but that's just my interpretation of it. But thanks for pointing that out because I think that's one of the criticisms of it. I, I mean, what I was going to conclude with that uh, topic is they're doing just fine as it is. But if you were to come in today and look at, let's say, Cadence, Cadence Blocks versus Divi versus Elementor, I don't feel there's anything about their interface or controls that's either exp better or more intuitive or, or better looking. In fact, in some ways, I find, again, each of them a flavor of uh, coffee. You know, Elementor, you got to know where the controls are. Divi, you got to know where the controls are. Gutenberg, you definitely have to know where the controls are. They're not better anymore than each other. Gutenberg's still a tiny rough, but they're just different. And you get comfortable with one, and it's like, okay, you know, like a set of golf clubs or a guitar or something. You just, you like the way it feels. All right, on to the next one. Fry, fry themes. What, what what would you say about Fry Themes, Spencer? Um, nothing that is going to be helpful because <laughs> we've talked about this conversation and here's the deal. Um, and forgive me because this is the thing that we've talked about 10 times, but there was, th there was Thrive Cart and then there was Thrive Themes. And Thrive Themes has a whole bunch of products, including the theme, but also like, I think the LMS, was it Tudor, right? And so forth. I can't remember which one there was. But ha ha uh, their CEO is Hani, right? Hana? Yes, Hannah. Yeah. Um, they they market themselves. The reason why I thought we have to discuss it is they really pitch themselves at membership. People looking to build a membership website on WordPress. They've got their own um, theme, um, page builder and themes. Well, the, they have the um, theme, they have the automator, the architect, the leads, the apprentice, the comments, whatever. But shopping, what said, yeah, all in the, one package. Yeah, the, the the Thrive Cart is not their thing. That's the no. part always makes me nuts because then you say like it's thrive and it's woocommerce and it's for selling is like too much but here's what i say because it's consistent there's their stuff is old-fashioned it uses it's not based on gutenberg it uses their own like architect architect, architect. Yeah. so what we've talked about in previous shows which i have to stick with here is they're doing the best that they can now they, I think they're owned by uh, the Empire, right? Well, they're owned by the Chocolate Factory, aren't they? Yeah, Wally by Wonga, the Chocolate Factory. Wally Wonga, the Chocolate so <laughs> that's, they, that's they, what I'm they, calling it now, Wally Wonga, the Chocolate I had to factory. remind myself because it literally almost, my 56-year-old brain has to like be sure I'm not talking about Thrive Cart, which is another business, but 
The, the fact is they made a choice, which I think is a good one. They took their entire thing and they moved it over to the grounds of the Willy Wonka's factory. And that is where they will get exposure to an audience, just like people do in Envato and Theme Forest. I was there yesterday and I was looking around. There's some plugins and things and themes that have 13,000 sales at $69, you know, in Envato. But that's just not what we're talking about here, is yeah. it? Like a person who comes in objectively who could choose would not choose this. I'm sorry, guys. Instead of doing a Gutenberg, you know, open-ended thing. Yeah, I, like would, uh, I just don't know what they're going to do with it. Um, fundamentally, this is this is because you. The reason I think we got to discuss expensive people do a search on YouTube or online. It's got a lot of people still promoting it because they did really good referral deals, and it offered a. Comp it, it's attractive to people looking at WordPress that don't know too much about it um, because it offers all these extra plugins that seems to be into an integrated kind of... Where they were quite innovative at the beginning because they, were, they built a page builder that had looked like it had a lot going for it. It, it was a... It had its problems, but the main problem was that they decided that they were going to offer. The, they were doing. Uh, they would attempted to become a SaaS player, and they had this WordPress wall garden, and they were going to offer all this functionality, but offer it in one solution at one price, and you'd be part of this wall garden. And they built this page builder called Architect, and it was part of their strategy, and it didn't work out. Well, it worked out pretty well. I'm sure they made a lot of money, and they sold the company, the founders, Shane, who's a really bright founder. Um, but they made a play, but in the end, it didn't work out. What the chocolate factory are going to do with it, I don't know. They might just keep it as it is. They might well, bun they're, they're the, they might like, bun like like WP Engine is doing with Genesis, the next thing we're going to talk about. It's going to be thrown in as like a part of their vertical. You know, you pay 30 bucks a month or whatever, and you get like a plan. And oh, by the way, all of this stuff is thrown in. That's the vertical model. Well, they might decide to do that, or they might they might decide to invest money and do what Divi do, is doing. Never but I don't, I don't think they are going to do that. Never going to happen. I'll tell you why, because... It gets outside the scope of this particular conversation, but since you brought it up, like I've been talking privately with Jason about WP Engine and like what they're doing. And it's interesting uh, when you look at it from the perspective of like a hosting company and what moves the needle. He talked about things with me in private that make sense. They're, they're talking huge volumes of, you know, like remember HostGator, it was like, Give you $125, send us a customer for $5 a month. How does that work out? It's because they're playing the long game. They're playing the millions and tens of millions. And you know what the, the chocolate factory doesn't have right now? Willy Wonka does not have a hosting element built in. But if you think that's not coming, you're out of your mind because he's acquiring all the pieces. Well, that's why that's why I think he, that's why I suggest that he they might decide to do something because it's got the architect. Uh, page builder but um and if you throw some money at it you might go down the divi route as a you know revamp no you don't think so well, just because, you know. because it's non-conforming the problem is i see software all the time that's fascinating because it still works it's still awesome but it's just like a quirky little standalone that's from a different era a different generation right when I was a kid, I used to build radio control model airplanes out of balsa wood. Now they just come vacuum packed, ready to go. And the fact is that the the technology of everything at Thrive is from another generation. So nobody's going to invest heavily into like a platform built on that. That would be ridiculous because nobody's going to start using it if they have a choice. But they will take it for free, just like if you've looked at all the hosting to date. CPanel and WHM used to be loaded with all these PHP-based tchotchkes and different things that you could add in. Um, it was like... I wouldn't be so dismissive because they, they have got the money. They could just take the interface, but to just do um, um, Gutenberg blocks, go the go the, the same route as Divi. I could see it happening, but you might be right. So I, I would probably say you can put that on my side of the bet for the $100, uh, the oh, other yeah. thing, because... 
You sort of you spread you already spread. Yeah, what that, that was, but no, uh, I forgot what that was. Um, Subby, wasn't it? I'm gonna go back to the trail. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Uh, um, so on to the next one. Um, Genesis Pro. I put this on the list for the totally opposite. Um, because this say folks that you're looking at building a membership website or on WordPress and you don't want it to do do it yourself. You're, you and you start doing searches to hire a developer. There's there's a and you, you're looking for somebody that's got some history. You, you know, you go on to certain um, developer websites. You do a search and you find a developer and they say, "Well, we, oh, I use Genesis. I'm going to build your membership website on Genesis for you." Yeah. Um, what what would you be your reply if you, you were getting a quote from a developer that's saying they're going to build your membership website on Genesis Pro? Well, what's interesting is the original purpose behind Genesis and Brian was, you know, a leader in that. They they used essentially programmatic means to achieve layouts instead of templates without getting too geeky. Instead of literally having a, a, a like a file folder with subfolders and little folders and paper inside, they used hooks and filters with PHP functions to build the layout, which was really streamlined. And for programmatic oriented people, it was really a nice thing to do because you literally could just have a, a, a neat little like 20 line thing that built the page. But <laughs> the page builders made that obsolete, just like very few people program in C++ or Fortran or COBOL or anything else. You just use a WYSIWYG interface or AI. So it, it kind of went into the dustbin, but as a talent acquisition, it's my opinion, WP Engine picked up Brian and his team and the, and the assets, and they throw a log on the fire, and now they have Brian doing newer things. So in other words, he, as a talented person, a designer person, has got a nice position, and it's envious for somebody in my age group to say, hey, you know what? It's nice to have a steady gig. Doing do you career. think? Do you think they're going to offer a Gutenberg um, library? Kind of go the Divi, offer their own. No, the, the the thing that I fear, but I can only get into so many public or private discussions with Jason Cohen about this. Is that the thing that I fear is that Brian? Maybe Brian should answer to this. I don't want to speak for him because he's a very nicely spoken person. It seems like Brian is enamored with full site editing, like enamored, like he is going full in on. And I don't know if that's the truth, but he can speak for himself. I don't begrudge him that because he will be the leader in that thing. He will be the leader. And Frost is fascinating. But man, I started trying it along with the other full site editing themes. And I was like, come on, like this is just nonsense. It's hooking up like a Tesla to a Tesla to a Tesla. We have too many new things in one spot. We only needed one. We've got two already. Don't make it three. So that's where I'm going with this is that I don't think there's any way they're going into building blocks and libraries. And if they do, it's in, a, it's in support of full site editing template making, which good luck. Yeah. So my suggestion is you're, if you're looking for a WordPress professional to help you build your membership site, you might come across there's a there's a there's a community and I'm going to be on their target list, but uh, I think it's fine, um, and they they are really committed still to it. It's got a very active community, folks, and they're passionate, almost as passionate as um, Divi, but it's a very different type of community. Um, I I would suggest to you that you don't, if you're having a professional build your website, do not have it built in Genesis Pro. Um, I just don't think it's the right thing myself. Right? I don't think anybody would, to be honest. Like if somebody said that, you could just essentially be sure that they're coming from a 10 year ago mindset. Because oh, there's uh, I think you'll get some. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, there's still people that think like real to real tape decks are cool or computer things with record. Like, of course, there's Drupal authors out there. But like, if somebody did that, I would not say they're wrong. I would say, where have you been? Like, did you just come out of a time machine or something? Because why would I build something with functionality that I can't do anything with myself and my team in the future? You're just paying to be boxed out of your own website. It makes no sense. Right, let's get on to the last thing, which 
Um, I thought we had to discuss it because just for the other factors of discussing Genesis, Fry themes, we we kind of delved in it earlier in the conversation, which was down to me, um, Alamator. Um, page builder, but also if anybody's doing a search about building a website on WordPress and themes, if they're doing it's going to come up because it struggles page builders and themes, doesn't it? So I thought we had to be part of the discussion. Um, and they've got their hosted solution, but they've also got their plugin. And you, you seemed in earlier discussions on this show, earlier episodes, that you felt that they were going totally sass. Um, I never felt that, but now you seem to be hinting that you feel that... that um, that they're going to keep both feet in both kind of <sighs> solutions communities. They're going to still offer their SaaS, but they also realise they've got to keep the plugin and the WordPress. And I always felt that, but you seem to be suggesting that now as well. Well, Verity is used to be the community manager, a very well-spoken, outspoken person. He doesn't need me to tell it. I don't even know what I can say because I'm just – we had a, a very nice conversation about things related and he insinuated what I was suggesting is not necessarily far from the truth, which is just obvious on its face to anybody who looks. That is, he used the term matrushka, matrushka doll, which is a doll and a doll and a doll and a doll. And so if you think about it, there's the WordPress ecosystem that has all the stuff in it. But if you want, Elementor is like a bigger doll that wraps around it, but you could approach this at any level. It's still got all the pieces. It's just they're approaching it from a layer outside of being inside of the level of WordPress. And instead are, by the way, WordPress and everything else, and it works with our stuff. And I think to that extent, there's going to be some really exciting creative stuff happening. And I'm pushing to try to participate at a more involved level. I don't want to characterize it like Brian Gardner because I'm not selling them a company, but that I feel a lot of the things that we discuss here in my energy and my companies is about it'd be really cool to work with a team like Elementor where I would have authority and a voice to say, hey, Elementor users, you know, like old Spence, the evil genius, like look at the fun stuff you could do with Elementor. Because once you're outside of the flea market economy of like randomness, everybody's got the same stack of stuff. I could just focus on making cool stuff happen with that stack of stuff. And I think that's what's really the more exciting part. To me, that feels a lot like if you looked at a Nathan Berry's ConvertKit. You know, ConvertKit is one of 55 CRMs, but Nathan in particular, I think has made it really exciting for people who are just creators to make and sell stuff within one SaaS platform. And if you imagine the same sensibility of Wix or Squarespace or Shopify, it's the same thing. It's like you know them and use them because it's focused. And that's where Elementor has an opportunity, I think, and I would participate at a high level given uh, the window to do so. Because yeah. it doesn't matter what the page builder is in that case. Yeah, I think um, they just announced their recent update. They've also, um, I'm can't, not sure if it's out of beta, flex, their Flexbox, I think it is. Um, I think utilising Flexbox will, will answer some of the performance problems. Um, now it's also, twice as flexy. Yeah, twice as flexy. Um, I also think um, it's tricky because you could, Folks, um, they could take this, they could try and go the same route that I think Fry Themes was trying. Obviously, a much, much bigger company got, you know, a lot more resources. But um, I think going, um, I could, I think they've backed off, and I think it's the right decision, actually, um, to do it. Because if you go too much the SaaS model, you're no longer going to, people, it's going to be a drip, drip, drip. The third party developer community, their plugins, they're not going, um, they're, they're just going to build for Gutenberg. And this is going to be a bit of a problem, um, in my opinion. But you could just decide, sod it, I'm just going to 
we're just going to be a SaaS platform. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm in a hedge on that one because here's what I see, and this is, they're not stupid either. Of course, they know what they're doing. See, the thing is, like we talked about in Votto or whatever, as long as there's a marketplace, and Elementor is a huge marketplace, yeah. Yeah. that's what they're actually working on. That was specifically what he did say publicly. He said he's looking to have, like imagine WordPress if it wasn't a plugin ecosystem, but I'm, I'm thinking he's saying like, imagine if you had a closer relationship as a plugin author to Elementor and you, you had a, a way to create and customize and sell stuff in this marketplace that we have instead of dealing with all the drama of even as of yesterday, I'm going to make a public plug in this video to say my annoyance with this. I discovered yesterday in launching one of my own products, which is your best profile, that WooCommerce in version seven in their infinite wisdom decided to put an advertisement in the footer of all the administrative emails that isn't a switch on and off, isn't in the dashboard. You have to know programmatically how to filter it out. And it literally is a link that goes to the WooCommerce selling of their mobile app. And I was like, what the actual F is going on here that in the open source plugin from automatic, they're putting now Easter egg, rotten Easter egg banners in. And that's the kind of shenanigans that is devolving in the WordPress economy because everybody is in a feast or frenzy, grab some land thing and spraying their names on billboards, including automatic. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a healthy ecosystem when that happens. Right. Whereas in an Elementor or a Divi Cloud or something, you know, there's no competition because it all goes through a filter. So let's just finish off. So I would suggest that if you're looking at one of these solutions to build your membership um, learning management system, it would either be Generate Press, um, Divi. I, I'm, I, I'm, I never had a love affair these with These are Divi. your choices, right? Yeah. Uh, it would be Generate Press, Divi, Astro Pro, Cadence, and Elemator. Um, Elemator's a bit outside. So if we remove Elemator, because it's a kind of. Is that in order different. for you, by the way? No, no, I don't think you can do them in order, because I think what you said, it, they're different tastes. They're, um, I think they all got kind of strengths and weaknesses, but I. I think you disagree. Well, I know what you're going to say. Utilize cadence. That's what you're going to say. No, I'm going to give a more thoughtful answer, but I wanted to clarify. I, I I will give you a thumbs up on your choices, given that you have made it not ordered. I will elaborate slightly on that same set of choices by saying I'm going to be definitive. If you are looking to achieve penetration to the marketplace of Elementor, then consider that like a pool of 15 million fish that you can go catching, okay? Like if you were going to make some something and you needed to get the benefit of like the low percentage. And Vado Theme Forest charges roughly 15% if you're exclusive to them, 55% if you're not. So it's like a huge difference of how much money you're giving away if you're not exclusive. If you want to build Elementor stuff, I think there's a lot of opportunity and you should talk to Verdi and get in on that whatever program they're offering. Now, on the other hand, if you are sticking with WordPress first, I do objectively think I would put Cadence and Astra and um, Generate Press at the same level, but I would start with Cadence mm -hmm. and then test the other two because it will be really hard to start with one and think like, this is cool. This is awesome. And then you realize like, oh my God, the sexiest well, thing. Well, I'm going to refine right. myself a bit more. I actually, I actually feel my personal because um, it would either be Cadence or Astra. It'd be those two. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you can flip the switch on the free version. You can put three of them in the dashboard, just turn them on with the same content and see for yourself and then look at their starter templates. And what you'll find is, Again, maybe to some people's sensibility, they like the strong styling of square corners and two pixel black borders and stuff. And maybe they like the nothing on the page of Generate Press. Yeah. But I like I like the more subtle, gentle, you know. But we got me. but we got to understand people love Divi. They uh, they just love it. Oh, I'm they? not done with Divi. I'm not yeah. done with Divi. So Divi is to me, if you are Bob Ross kind of person. And you're just making pretty stuff that doesn't really, it's static in nature and so forth. 
you might find yourself attracted to the Divi community, which is still very strong. It's not 15 plus million people, but it's, you know, it's probably call it a mill. And you would get stuff if you made accessories for Divi. But the ecosystem of Divi is not going to act the same way. Uh, one of our colleagues in the past had a lot of deep ties in there. And Divi is a very incestuous community uh, where if you haven't lived here a long time and you come in trying to make a living, you get a lot of grief versus Elementor is more controlled and it was top-down management. And then there's the flea market of WordPress. So like Divi, if you're trying to sell stuff versus just make stuff, I mean, in the marketplace there, I'd be careful. But to use it as a tool, and if you also want to service legacy Divi customers, great. But also keep in mind, if you have a legacy Divi customer, God bless you with the time it's going to take you now to convert all that old short cord stuff. You know, fantastic. Well, I think we've had a great show. So, Spencer, how people can find out more about you and what you're up to? Um, I'm using spencerforeman.com as the hub. However, I want to make a slight pitch. I've started in 2023 helping freelancers to succeed with how to attract ideal freelance clients. And I have a new product released today at yourbestprofile.com. Very inexpensive. It's a workshop. It's an add-on email uh, course. And it's a, a hands-on type of a review starts at nine dollars goes to 11 and it's something that will help those freelancers i've been talking about who want to make a living doing freelance things even in wordpress so many of them i mean if you're so many of them just put their foot in their mouth with how they approach new people or how they put their profile on linkedin or what they say it's happening during the show like you friend them or you say i'd like to talk to you and then bing to bang but boom they come on like a ton of bricks it doesn't have to be that way. So go over to yourbestprofile.com if you're listening. Check it out. Maybe Tina wants to look at it for her audience because I'm going to use my 40 plus years entrepreneurial and my 17 years in WordPress of how to approach new people and turn them into very profitable clients for a simple job, like make 300 bucks in an hour of work. So that's it. That's fantastic. And um, please join us live um, if you've got any um, questions, need any advice, join us on the Membership Machine Facebook group uh, area. You can join that for free. Both me and Spencer are on there regularly. And if you've got any questions, we also got a load of developer WordPress types on there. <coughs> need any advice to how to build your membership website, um, go there and you'll get a load of advice there. We'll be back next week with another great subject. We'll see you soon. Bye.